Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Rubin, back with another episode of Ad Hoc with the Doc. I am here with the um, being very fortunate to sit with two of my very good friends and colleagues for a long time, Dr. Jen Green and Dr. Heather Wright, who here at the 2018 Oncology Association of Naturopathic Physicians Annual Convention in Tempe, Arizona, just gave an unbelievably and overwhelmingly wonderful talk about easing distress and pain in people with breast cancer. You guys not only were amazing, but what you presented was so amazing. And I think what the audience really took to is the amount of modalities open to treat people who have distress and pain associated with breast cancer. There's so much out there that I wasn't even aware of. And I'd love to talk about what your response was when you started writing this lecture. And as you went through it, what were some of the things that you were thinking to yourself as you approached giving this lecture? Dr. Green? Hmm. Um, well, a few things were striking from the start. Um, first of all was the incredible prevalence of uh, persistent pain mm -hmm. after breast cancer and distress in breast cancer survivors. And how... Uh, what an intense burden it was mm -hmm. for women living with breast cancer um, to have unmet needs around sleep, anxiety management, stress management, social support, um, information needs, and the real, it became apparent very quickly mm -hmm. that what we do and what, what we, as a matter of course, mm -hmm. as naturopathic oncologists, um, is really perfectly suited mm -hmm. for this unmet need. Um, high, high prevalence of pain and distress. And you can't really uncouple those. Okay. You can't uncouple the physical pain from the distress because pain causes distress and distress causes pain. And I think most of the this. time, patients are medicated, which mm -hmm. sometimes, this is my interpretation, is that they're medicated, which doesn't necessarily attend to the distress component mm -hmm. unless relieving some of the pain, relieve some of the stress, and therefore relieve some dis distress. But one of my takeaways from your talk, Dr. Wright, was that distress was an unmet need and didn't seem that the data when you attended to distress was phenomenal. Yes, there are so many tools that patients can have mm -hmm. to ease distress, to ease pain in breast cancer survivorship. Um, talk about a couple of those. Yeah, what, what are tools some that are so easy to implement. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I shouldn't say easy. They may be very hard work for yeah, cancer patients, but they're enjoy enjoyable therapies. So things like yoga, yoga. things like mindfulness-based okay. stress reduction counseling, what which is a mouthful. Mean? What does that mean, mindfulness right. stress reduction? Right. What does that mean? So it's meeting with a counselor mm -hmm. to help learn strategies for reducing stress, either okay. by the tools like yoga, okay. breathing exercises, mm -hmm. how uh, coping activities, mechanisms that we can um, help teach patients to understand and recognize when they're feeling stress, how to relieve those symptoms mm -hmm. using some simple behavioral measures. Um, and often when we see patients implement these, mm -hmm. you know, the outcomes are incredible. And not only that, do patients feel better when they mm -hmm. use these therapies, but the data is telling us that they have better survival and decreased recurrence rates, decreased inflammation, okay, just from on, using things start. like mindfulness -based. You're talking about de increased survival. They live longer. People live longer when they... And in decreased recurrence rates. Yes. So, so cancer not coming back when they pay attention to the mindfulness. Talking about yoga. Does this mean that somebody with distress or cancer-associated pain can just go into whatever yoga class that they want? Are there different types of yoga maybe that have shown you know better results or should they be seeking the advice from one of their practitioners on what may be safe or how soon after surgery or during chemotherapy if their white blood count? I mean, there's a lot I would feel that goes into this. Is that true? Yeah, and that's where we come in in okay. terms of advising patients around safety and you know if they're still in a reconstruction process mm -hmm. not overdoing it um, while implants or temporary this expanders are in yeah it's it is complex and it becomes apparent very quickly that individualized care is required and wow. that's where we shine as naturopathic physicians well, is that's individualized what we do. care yes. each person yeah. is different so, so each person gets you know, consideration for what they're going through and then guidance from an expert. So you can kind of put all these modalities on yeah. the table, form this relationship with your patient, introduce what you think might be right, change it up as need be, which is interesting because 
these tools aren't just exclusively available to naturopathic doctors. Mm -hmm. This is data in the literature, even in conventional literature. How well do you think it's being utilized out in the general community? I think it's being utilized to a limited extent in survivorship programs. It needs programs. more. Yes. It needs more, and naturopathic do doctors it? are the natural ambassadors yes. of these. Um, and not only that, but we know the standards of education and training and licensure mm -hmm. that the other providers need to have to address mm -hmm. our patients with these individual needs. So, you know, whether licensed massage therapists have oncology training or skill set, and whether um, co psychological counselors can work with patients with special needs and cancer, and really <coughs> recognizing social isolation and really helping patients find their support groups. Um, all of these providers are people in our referral network mm -hmm. and that we can guide patients to this who have great. a skill and a level of training to really impact And a lot of case. naturopathic doctors have associated with practitioners in their own clinic or in the mm -hmm. same practice. Yes. Let's, let's just shoot a case at you, because probably a common case that we have in our practice, there's a woman, she has a lumpectomy, and she's staged, and she's found to have one of three sentinel nodes positive. Okay, let's say this, the tumor is 1.5 centimeters, so lumpectomy sentinel node. And um, her testing suggests that no chemotherapy is required. But it also suggests that she could benefit from some hormonal therapy. She's also going to need radiation therapy. She chooses conventional medicine, but she also wants to integrate. Whatever happens during that radiation phase happens, whether she's seeing a naturopathic doctor or not, but she emerges from that with breast pain and scar-related pain. Is that something you see in your practice? What, what types of treatments, I mean, usually the pain might be medicated with something that you take, which is going to be of limited value and doesn't really seek to treat, I mean, it might just cover up the pain. What types of things could this woman do if she has scar-related pain, whether it be from lymph nodes or the breast, or you know, a tight breast plus radiation? Mm -hmm. right, what, what's, what comes to your mind based on your talk of what they could do, either in the you know in the naturopathic clinic? Yeah. So um, breast-related pain is very prevalent. Mm -hmm. Breast it, cancer related pain yeah, I mean, following treatment, treatment or even during uh, and before diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we in, looked in the literature and up to 40% of patients have breast pain prior to their surgery or prior, prior to their the radiation surgery. treatment. From so the that's tumor? a really high level. Or, from a, or maybe a yeah. fibro fibrocyst or it something? It could be um, okay. cyclic nostalgia. It could be from the tumor. Yeah. Um, so these so, are people coming to the surgery already with pain. Exactly. Very high prevalence of that. Yeah. And now we're going to cut into the breast, the surgeon is, and that the underlying cause may not have been... And so the tools we were talking about today mm -hmm. that could impact this, such as acupuncture, mm -hmm. massage, um, using self-massage techniques even, um, what are some of the other therapies yeah, we were for, talking about Yeah, for today? more intense nerve pain, which can sometimes happen nerve post surgically. Yes. Then what does that feel like to people? Describe um, that for the audience so great. they know what you're talking about. Yeah, so about. nerve pain would usually be described as hot or burning. Or sometimes okay. it's described as electrical pain. and right. Like a pulse or something. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. And that can be anywhere in the radiation field. So it can be okay. chest wall or the breast itself okay. or the armpit. Okay. Um, like, does it sometimes happen with range of motion if they're reaching up top or something? They can feel like a zap or something? something absolutely so that's nerve related pain yeah okay, exactly and then um, some topical ideas and I always lean towards topicals um, mm -hmm. because I feel like that helps reconnect a woman with her body and there's been a lot of changes yes. in her body so Wonderful. that's a um, there's Ooh, a healing cool. process that happens with that exactly well, so you when developed a you were passing <laughs> yeah. around something yeah, yeah. you developed breast a, tell oil. us about the oil what's it yeah. called um, it, I call it beloved breast oil but um, it's uh, black cumin seed oil because there's mm -hmm. research on that for cyclic mm -hmm. nostalgia infused mm -hmm. with phytolaca which is a traditional herb for um, breast lumps and lymphatic okay. drainage in the breast uh, along with Turmeric essential oil is an anti-inflammatory, and orange essential oil, which is a source of limonene. Um, but I think plain castor oil, which is widely available, okay. is wonderful. And whether it's a castor oil pack or a massage with mm -hmm. a castor oil, seeing an oncology massage therapist is also extremely you useful. You said the word oncology massage therapist. What does that yes. mean? Is that important that the word oncology is there? Absolutely. Okay. Um, oncology massage therapists are people who've gotten additional training in mm -hmm. oncology massage okay. and so are sensitive to tissue, what safety of um, mm -hmm. doing massage over areas that might have been radiated, when and where, timing matters mm -hmm. a lot. Obviously you don't want to massage directly over any 
red areas that are still not fully healed. Mm, could cause um, infection, maybe. Exactly. Is that important also when they're applying oil? Because oil does create like a barrier to. Uh, yeah, and on the oil idea, for instance, you wouldn't use an oil during radiation because okay. oils will impact the way radiation hits the tissues. You would think about using them away from radiation. Or, so after radiation. Yeah, yeah. To help soften the yeah. tissue. And, and a simple thing that women can do at any stage of treatment is ground flax seeds because. For it, pain. Uh, well, for the health of the tissue itself. Talk about why a naturopathic physician would be concerned about what's called the health of the tissue. Yes. I think that's really important. Oh, because great. You guys talked about, correct me yes. if I'm wrong, about there's the pain, but then there's the, everything else where the pain is. Yes, and, and that we have shared mechanisms between pain and also distress and um, fatigue, which is inflammation, um, altered um, HPA access, which is a fancy way of saying stress hormones. Mm -hmm. um, there's shared physiological pathways with that, and, um, and also with uh, altered immune function. So that sort of is a tie that binds many of these symptoms that women experience. And what's nice, yoga is a good example, I'll come back to it for a moment, okay. because so there's research that yoga eases distress in breast cancer survivors and improves sleep. And then there's also these studies that it lowers inflammation. So it's yeah, it's big. So it's big. we could use an anti-inflammatory medication or supplement mm -hmm. or herb, but then we wouldn't be getting the benefit of the person potentially receiving a whole lot of social support from mm -hmm. being in a group environment and mm -hmm. forming bonds in that class. Uh, certainly, they wouldn't be learning the same self-regulation skills with deep breathing. So uh, one of the things that we emphasized are, I think of them as low-hanging fruit. Exercise, stress management, um, mind-body therapies, mm -hmm. and uh, acupuncture, I put in a category that have very broad impacts okay. and are safe and easy to integrate. There's not, you know, we're not worried. Yeah to a high degree about interactions with conventional therapies, although we do have to be a little bit mindful of timing. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, they're easy for women to safely integrate into their plan. You mentioned, I don't remember which one of you it was, but it was mentioned in the lecture that the enzyme bromelain. Ah, you know, <laughs> yeah. And that's found where? where yeah, that's a pineapple enzyme. I just oh. love bromelain because <laughs> we have a study showing that it improves mm -hmm. immunity after breast cancer surgery, immune parameters. Wait, is it, so mm -hmm. you mean Eat, taking bromelain or eating pineapple that mm -hmm. contains bromelain can improve immune function in women after they've had a breast cancer surgery. Yeah. Why is that important? Ah, great example. Uh, great, great question. Um, I would say surgery is an opportunity for our immune system to learn about the tumor. Wow. But the challenge with surgery is it induces a lot of inflammation. And cancer as an inflammatory process really likes inflammation and systemic inflammation. It lives in inflammation. Exactly. It it's, that's how metastasis yeah. works. That's how it propagates itself. And so one of our jobs in treating the underlying terrain in breast cancer mm -hmm. is to, after surgery is over, really pretty aggressively decrease inflammation mm -hmm. so that the conditions are not favorable for cancer. Well, that, I have to say, is really the domain of the naturopathic physician mm -hmm. because pain meds in general don't treat inflammation. Mm -hmm. And anti-inflammatories mask the underlying causes of inflammation. When mm -hmm. the medicine is done working and it's out, metabolized out of the body, the inflammation persists and can roar back. Or they may provide immediate relief, but mm -hmm. do they have the long-term benefits of some of these therapies that we're talking about? The long-term quality of life and outcomes benefits impact to recurrence and survival. That yeah. something like yoga, movement, breath work, journaling, mm -hmm. yes. what about support networks, these can nature. provide lasting benefits. What about being outside? Yes. Being well, nature looking. is a great one. A great one. There's something called blue spaces and green spaces. Okay. So blue spaces are spaces in nature that are near bodies of water okay. and green spaces are near green trees, grass, hills, mountains. Um, and there is data to suggest or evidence to suggest that these provide inherent benefits to patients in terms of decreasing stress and improving quality of life. What about watching it on a video screen? <laughs> hey, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. We're talking about being outside, breathing air, getting out of the city, being relaxed, seeing beauty, looking at it in a three-dimensional way. Forest bathing. With depth. Forest bathing. What's forest bathing? What <laughs> forest bathing, that's a Japanese research um, on forest bathing, compares walking in an urban environment with concrete mm -hmm. to walking in the forest, which they, I love the term forest bathing. And basically yeah. they find uh, a big difference in immune parameters when you forest bathe. And 
you know, we're not really sure why, whether you want to say it's um, aromatherapy oils being like exuded by the, the trees, or, or whether it's the energy of the trees, or the psychology, or the different or the oxygen. Exercise. Well, the exercise is even between urban and, and, and forest, but I, I like to leave it in the mystery of the magic of the forest. Before we go, before we sign off, I have one question for each of you. Dr. Jen Green, blue space or green space? Both. Dr. Heather Wright, blue space or green space? Oh, both, but blue space. I can't blue live space. without. <laughs> I'm Green Space for the most part. My name is Dr. Dan Rubin for Ad Hoc with the Doc. Thank you guys so Thank much you, for Dr. sharing Rubin. your insights.